Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about a new risk indicator we just launched for Polygon and its native token Matic. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So Matic was an asset that was pretty widely requested. So um, here it is. And we think that it's a pretty good asset to be keeping an eye on. You know, one of the big narratives in this phase of the bull um, cycle has been about Ethereum and the kind of obscenely high gas fees, the obscenely high transaction fees that one has to pay to use Ethereum. So using DeFi on Ethereum and things like that is pretty hard to do unless you're kind of a whale, unless you have a lot of money to be able to cover all those transaction fees. Normal people can't pay, you know, $100 just for one transaction. It doesn't really work. And that's arguably why we've seen the explosion of interest in some of these other layer one protocols um, that are kind of Ethereum competitors, things like Solana or um, Avalanche or FTM, for example, places where people might be turning to instead for things like DeFi and, some, and NFTs, for example, because those other platforms offer such so much lower transaction costs than Ethereum. And of course, Polygon is trying to offer another solution to those high transaction fees, being a layer two solution that integrates itself with Ethereum, but is able to resolve transactions at significantly lower prices and has a lot higher throughput. And so I think it's useful to keep an eye not only on these kind of competitor layer ones to Ethereum, but also these layer two projects to see which ones might be catching on. And so we've put together this risk indicator. If you've uh, been following the channel, you're probably you're quite familiar with these types of graphs. What I'm showing you here is the price action or the price history of Polygon over time with the price plotted in logarithmic form. Each dot is a day and each day is color coded based on the output of our risk indicator, the upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. And the way you can read the output is a score of five means high risk. That's when the upside potential is quite low, downside potential is quite high. Score of negative five is the opposite. That's low risk. That's when the downside potential is quite low upside potential is quite high. And what you can see is that over um, Polygon's history, the UDPI has done a pretty great job of identifying these low risk periods here that have tended to precede these big moves to the upside, as well as these high risk moves, these tops and local tops that tend to either precede corrections in the price of Matic or in this kind of sideways price action that we see um, coming off of this red zone here. And what you can see is that the UDPI did a pretty great job of identifying this period before the massive run that we saw in 2021 as being a low risk zone, identifies these kind of local, these two kind of local tops, identifies the summer as being a, a quite good buying opportunity, which in hindsight, it very much was. Um, and then also identifies these moves up as things kind of go more overheated, the correction down, flash green again before we put in this more recent run that Matic just put in. And now it's a little bit overheated and correcting downwards. And of course, part of that is probably because Bitcoin has kind of recently lost its footing. We're in the middle of a, of a reasonable correction now with Bitcoin that just tends to drag down altcoins um, with it. But the good news for that is that might give time for Matic to kind of cool off. What I expect to happen is that as that kind of continues, UDPI will become more bullish on Matic. It might even flip back to green. And then that might just suggest a good uh, another good opportunity essentially. And so really when you're in a bull market, and that's kind of our thesis here at Upside Down Data that we're in a bull market, it's not, these corrections aren't necessarily a bad thing. They're expected. And frankly, they're just an opportunity for you to lower your cost basis. You know, if you just want to acquire more of the asset, these corrections are great times to do so. So again, not financial advice. You should form your own opinions and strategies. But here at Upside Down Data, that's kind of we, how we do it. We have a macro thesis about the market and what's part of this market that we're in. We think we're still in a bull phase and an uptrend. So therefore these corrections are, are not really anything to be particularly concerned about. And really when you look at this chart, you can also see that there's nothing particularly worrying about it either for more recent price action, right? You know, in, in history, uh, the UDPI for Matic in this case has gotten to those really high risk zones before meaningful corrections have happened. You know, looking at Matic's history, it kind of had this just long accumulation range all throughout you know, from its inception in 2019 all the way to this massive run 2021. And then the only real meaningful correction we've had kind of off of that is this this fall from the all-time high down into these lows in the summer. That's kind of the most meaningful correction that Matic has had in recent memory. And then since then, we've just been trending up. 
And so because they're kind of still in that uptrend, it's not really anything to worry about in a market structure sense. And because we didn't just put in a high red zone in either of these peaks, historically speaking, this doesn't look like it was a top. This doesn't look like we're about to see another colossal correction like we just saw here. Now, again, obviously with altcoins, you have to be a little bit more, pay more attention to what Bitcoin's doing because that kind of sets the tone. And obviously if Bitcoin were to dump massively, then Matic would probably have to fall along with it. And so in some ways, Matic's fate is not its own. It's a little bit tied to Bitcoin. But assuming nothing crazy happens with Bitcoin, there's nothing to think that Matic has put in some kind of top that requires some massive correction. You know, Matic might continue to fall for a little bit more. You know, the UDPI um, does give it a decent amount of downside potential in it to fall, but it doesn't mean it needs to fall back below these support levels or, or much further. If it kind of consolidates down here for a while, I would expect the UDPI to become more bullish on it, and that might just set it up for another move to the upside. So right now, because we're kind of in this bull phase, at least in our opinion, being in this kind of general UDPI range doesn't seem especially scary. doesn't seem especially um, too problematic. Now, one other thing I think is useful to, to think about with this chart, just interesting looking back at its history, is also how I think it illustrates um, how the crypto market tends to kind of operate in cycles and the idea of this money flow where people will take profits off of certain assets that have run early and then move them into other assets that haven't yet moved yet. So one thing that's interesting about Matic is that when you go back to this move that it put in coming into 2021, Matic was actually one of the later assets to really put in a massive move. So from this very kind of low point down here, kind of the uh, there's actually some wicks that go a bit further down here. From here to here, it put in as, as high as a 260x move, so just massive move. From here to here is around about a 50x move. But you'll see that this move, most of this move happened actually um, starting kind of late January, then into March. And of course, back in this t uh, time earlier this year, that was quite a bit later than a lot of altcoins um, rally. That, was, that happened a little, quite a bit later. A lot of them put in huge moves either in January or February. So, so uh, Matic not moving like this until March suggests that what might've been happening is that people were riding some of those other ones. So, you know, Bitcoin kind of moved first in and then kind of had a local top in January. Then what might've happened is people might've been taking a ton of profits off of Bitcoin, moving them into some of those other assets that ran into February. And people probably took profits off of those assets and then moved them into things like Matic, which then ran up. And this is an idea that we talk a lot about on this channel, this idea of, of cycling money, compounding profits. The idea is that when one asset runs and become, gets to these really high levels of risk, what one can do is then survey other areas of the crypto space, see what assets are still relatively low risk, which ones that haven't put in big moves yet, and then one can potentially move profits into those other assets that haven't moved yet, and then compound those profits to the upside. So crypto tends to act in cycles. You know, it'll be either kind of on a, a bigger side where there's certain sectors that'll heat up one after the other. So right now we're kind of potentially in the in the middle or kind of tail end maybe of kind of the, the gaming and metaverse phase where a lot of those tokens have been exploding. Before then, you know, we kind of had a meme token uh, phase where things like uh, uh, SHIB went crazy and, and really rallied super far. And before then, maybe it was kind of layer one protocols, things like Solana, things like Cardano, um, and then a little bit later on, things like Atom and HBAR and Algo ran. And then within those uh, sectors, as they're heating up, it's also the case that oftentimes certain protocols run before others. So if we take the layer one as an example, Cardano ADA ran first coming out of the summer, and then it was kind of followed closely behind by uh, Solana. But then later on, it was assets like HBAR or Algo that really heated up. And the idea is that if one had been kind of following the money flow, if one had an ADA position, for example, wrote it up in that kind of initial big move, and then move those profits into something like Solana or maybe even into one of those later ones like uh, Adam or Algo, one could have compounded the profits one would have made off of something like ADA. And so I just think it's, this, is a, this chart here for Matic is an interesting example of how you can kind of see this happen in history, where we know the order in which those assets ran back here. So it's kind of interesting that Matic was one of these later runners that ran into March. And then this move wasn't even until May when most of other assets had actually already put in their kind of second legs up at that point. And now we're cooled off. And it'll also be interesting to watch what Matic does in the future. Will Matic continue to be kind of one of these later followers in the market or will it maybe start leading a little bit more? But kind of regardless of what happens with that, it doesn't really matter. If you have a position in Matic and it runs first, great. You can take profits, move it elsewhere if you want to. But if it doesn't run uh, early, if other ones run first, then great. That just gives you opportunity to take profits into Matic and ride it as it goes up. 
So these are things that we kind of think about when we're looking at these kind of indicators is when are things heating up relative to other assets? And if it's doing so beforehand, that's an opportunity potentially. And then if it's, it's heating up first, then that's an opportunity to take profits potentially to somewhere else. So none of that's financial advice. You should form your own strategies. But that idea of the money flow, I think, is an interesting one to think about in the crypto space. And I think this chart for Matic here kind of shows an interesting historical example of how an asset put in massive moves after other ones and how that could have just been compounding earlier profits potentially. So to talk about a little bit more about where we are now, I think it's useful to look at this output for the UDPI. So this is just plotting the, the output of the model across time. So the UDPI ranges from five to negative five, high risk, risk, low risk. And here we're just plotting that over time. So you can see these massive spikes up for that huge move that Matic put in in from early 2021 into March and then again into May, spiking up into these almost uh, five, about five and almost five right here. And then we can also look at what happened more recently. So this is where I fell into the summer. We kind of had that move back up to the upside that then had a bit of a cool off phase down at these, these uh, relatively low risk levels back up to where we were. And now we're kind of turning the corner again. And as Bitcoin has kind of lost its footing, pulling everything else down with it, um, Matic is falling as well. And so what is reasonable to expect is that if it takes a while for Bitcoin to kind of get its, its legs under it again, if it kind of either has to correct more before it finds some solid support um, or catches a bounce, or if it just needs to trade sideways for a while, um, I would expect Matic to be probably unlikely to be putting in massive moves to the upside while that's happening. It could, of course, you know, nothing's guaranteed. Matic could go on another run. Um, you know, it's crypto, anything can happen. But what I would kind of maybe expect to happen would be that um, most likely Matic might just be able to find its own support. And what would happen then is that the UDPI would probably slowly become more and more bullish on Matic as it's able to kind of build up support at, the, at, um, at a new level. And then that might just provide a new opportunity to potentially be entering the Matic market before it's able to put another leg up um, back up to the upside. So the fact that the UDPI is rolled over here, uh, I'm going to personally be watching for as it kind of falls when it's when it shows a reversal to the other side. Oftentimes when you see these reversals, it tends to suggest that the bottom is in or at least the bottom is close. So that's something I'm going to be keeping an eye on is as this potentially keeps falling. When that reversal happens, that might be a signal that a re-entry into Matic might be looking a little more favorable. And it's just going to be interesting to see how far it falls, how far the risk level falls, how kind of bullish uh, the UDPI gets, how, how much it thinks that the upside potential is now outweighing the downside potential. The more negative it gets, the, the more favorable the risk reward, according to the model, basically. So to talk a little bit more about where we stand right now, Matic is actually right around neutral. So we're at um, 0 0.11. So that's basically around uh, break uh, an even point for the risk reward ratio. The upside potential and the downside potential are relatively equal according to the model. And so really what the idea here is that, you know, should something happen like Bitcoin dump or if Matic just needs to correct more before it can really find solid support, there's room for that to happen. But at the same token, if Matic decides to go crazy and start pumping again, there's a lot of room to the move to the upside as well. And so it's kind of sitting in the middle here. It's not really in these super favorable risk reward uh, areas that we've seen in the past, but it's also not in any kind of a scary uh, range right here either. So it's kind of a little bit uh, undecided right now. You know, it could kind of go either way is the idea. And so as I was just mentioning before with the idea of the money flow, that's where we think having indicators for multiple different assets across the crypto space is really useful. And that's really what we're trying to build here at Upside Down Data is not just these indicators for individual assets, but kind of an overall toolkit, a, a perspective on the market across a bunch of different assets where you can just look and at a glance see which assets seem to be overheating, which ones seem to be a bit lower risk, um, and also just kind of a general state of the market. You know, just a few days ago before Bitcoin put in this, this big correction and kind of uh, fell quite far off of its, where I put in its new all-time high, risk levels had been noticeably elevated from where they are right now. A lot of these, these risk levels have fallen um, notably since uh, just a week ago. And so that suggests that the market overall had been kind of heating up, risk was rising across the board. And now as we've seen this correction, risk is falling again. And really for the bull market, you know, if we're expecting kind of a longer bull market this time, which personally I'm expecting that to happen, you know, uh, these 
these bull cycles have tended to, or crypto cycles overall, you know, Bitcoin cycles have tended to be expanding over the different cycles it's put in, getting longer and longer. And so I'm personally expecting this one to be longer than the last one. And for that to happen, for the, for this bull market to be able to kind of go longer, you know, we don't really want risk to, to get to these super high risk levels because that might kind of mark a premature end of the market. Really, potentially, the best outcome for the market is for it to kind of be able to hang out in these kind of more neutral risk uh, areas for a while, to be able to put these moves to the upside, but then consolidate, put more moves to the upside, even higher, and then put in a higher low, uh, then a higher high again, a higher low after that. And that might be how we'll be able to get to these really high evaluations that some people are, are calling for. You know, I personally think it's highly unlikely that, for example, Bitcoin would be able, be able to rally up, you know, to 200K by the end of the year. It just seems very unlikely. So then for other assets, it would also cap their growth. Um, you know, if Bitcoin did do a parabolic move like that, for example, I don't think it would make that that high. And I think it would bring about a premature bear market. And that would be unfortunate, I think, because I think a lot of these other assets like Matic, have a lot of room that they could go this cycle. I think they could appreciate quite high, but it's all going to be depending on things not getting cut short prematurely. And so in some ways, this slow and steady move to the upside, I personally think is more ideal than if we just put in a parabolic move that just ended things right away and put us into a protracted bear market, where we probably would actually be losing gains we could have gotten if we had a more healthy market structure moving up. And so when you look at all these different indicators across the space, you can get a sense of how overheated is the market versus not. And right now, when you just look at it, you know, for Matic and for all these other ones, it's just not worrying right now, especially, you know, it's it's not, we're not in these super low risk zones. We're not also in these super high risk zones for most of the assets either. It's just not all that concerning. So I personally haven't seen anything that suggests that we've put in a new top and that we're heading into a big bear market. Obviously, it could be wrong, you know, anything can happen in crypto. But really, with all the kind of the evidence, the on-chain data and things like that, it just doesn't seem like that's really where we're at right now. And so here at Upside Down Data, what we're going to be doing is keeping an eye on these indicators. We're going to be watching Matic closely. We're going to be seeing what it does. Does it put in kind of a new low on its risk indicator? Does the risk indicator put in a reversal, suggesting the bottom might be in? That might suggest a good entry point. And in the meantime, we'll also be watching all these other assets that we have here. So things like Atom, ADA, Algo, um, being in these negative uh, areas, XRP. We'll see if those keep on dropping, if those offer even more favorable uh, opportunities. And we'll also be watching assets like DOT, which had been quite overheated, you know, well above three for a while, is now dropped to, to two and it's, it's continuing to fall as its price has been falling. It'll be interesting to see if assets like those might actually become uh, more favorable and actually offer kind of re-entry points for those who are interested. So this is what we're going to be doing on this channel. Is we're going to be adding more and more indicators. We're going to be watching these things. We're going to be kind of keeping an eye on where the market is overall, as well as the specific assets and see where things go. So if you want to keep apprised of kind of the overall risk in the market, as well the risk is for specific assets as we uh, monitor them, the ones we have, and we add more, uh, subscribe to the channel. Give, it, uh, give us a follow on Twitter. We're going to be following these things um, closely and letting you know what we're seeing. So if you like the content, remember to like the video, uh, give us, uh, uh, subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter. And remember, with UDPI, we're all going to make it.